far. So um, welcome to everyone. Welcome to all of our panelists. I'm going to take a quick minute to introduce um, the directors of the various programs that are represented here today, and then we'll get started with questions. Um, and there will be a Q&A session, hopefully if we have time at the end, uh, that Sherry will, will walk us through. Um, so welcome again to everyone in our panelists. We'll start by introducing Jordi Mondria, who is the Director of the Master of Financial Economics and a professor at the University of Toronto. Jordi holds a PhD from Princeton University. His research interests are asset pricing, portfolio theory, and international economics. His research papers have been published in top finance and economics journals, are highly cited, and appear in leading books on finance and information economics. Welcome to Jordi. Andre Badescu is the director of the a Master of Financial Insurance, or MFI, uh, and a professor at the Department of Statistical Sciences at the University of Toronto. Early in his academic career, his primary focus in research was in mathematical risk theory and its connections to queuing theory and stochastic fluid flows by implying matrix analytic methods to tackle these problems. Subsequently, his research interests expanded to the areas of stochastic claim reserving, operational risk modeling, dependence and actuarial sciences, uh, rate making and predictive analytics in insurance. He has authored over 40 research articles, including several in top tier actuarial science journals, and has been cited over 1,200 times. He's the associate editor of Insurance, Mathematics, and Economics, and uh, the leading journal in insurance math in mathematics. Welcome to Andre. Uh, from the Master of Financial Risk Management, or MFRM, is Ng Ha Cheng, who is the Academic Director of this program and an Associate Professor of Finance at Rotman. Ng holds a PhD and a Master's Degree in Economics from Princeton University and a Bachelor's in Science from the University of Chicago. He researches how beliefs and incentives affect capital markets and the economy. His recent work includes studies of volatility and commodity deri derivatives markets, the impact of COVID-19, and the 2008 great financial crisis on markets, and new and emerging topics in economics and finance. Welcome, welcome to Ng. And from the MMF, or Master of Mathematical Finance, we have Luis Seiko, who's the director of the program and a professor of mathematics at the University of Toronto. Professor Seiko holds a PhD from Princeton, is the director of Risk Lab, which is an international research partnership of universities and companies in the financial risk management sector. He leverages university networks worldwide to promote training and research in areas where technology is bringing disruption, including education, he has authored many papers on financial risk management, investments, and market models, and has won a number of research awards. His research interests include harmonic analysis, mathematical physics, and mathematical finance. So welcome to Luis and again to all of our panelists. So um, we'll start with our first question. We have four um, um, wonderful programs here that um, we are, are all here to learn about. So if you can please share a brief overview of your program and perhaps Jordi, we'll start with you. Okay, welcome everyone. Thanks a lot for, uh, for coming to here. Let me start just uh, saying that uh, if you want to do a graduate program in finance, you're in the right place. Like uh, these four programs here at U of T are excellent. They complement each other very well. So like you'd be successful in any of these programs. Let me tell you a bit uh, specifically about, um, about the MFE program. So the MFE program is a professional program offered by the uh, Econ Department in collaboration with Rotman. We have a unique curriculum, so you're going to have uh, the MA in economics core courses and electives with also MBA core courses and electives. So like that's where like the, you, it's like you get two masters in one. There is a mandatory internship, so there is a mandatory internship in the winter or in the summer, so like one of the two. We start in July, and this is basically because of recruiting reasons. So. Um, um, employers come earlier and earlier to recruit. So basically like we, we have to prepare students very early on for like for students to get the, their internships. It's an 18 months program. So it's basically like until like it's gonna finish on December of the following year. We have a long legacy. So we've been around for like uh, 24 years. Um, just to get you an idea, like uh, as of November 3rd, we had like 100% of internship uh, placement. So everyone got an internship. And in terms of full employment, 
after uh, basically by the July of the year that you graduate, basically like six months out, we have 100% full employment. So basically like everyone gets internships, everyone gets jobs. And we're going to train on how to uh, do this. So that's basically a little bit uh, about the MFE program. Great. Thanks very much for that, Jordi. And I'll just invite um, folks on the call who are who are, paying, who are listening. If you want to ask a question, uh, feel free to use the chat function and we'll try to get to that at the end. And if we don't get to answer it on this call, um, the appropriate staff will will follow up with you um, by, um, we'll, we'll follow up with, with additional information. Um, so uh, why don't we go over to, uh, to Luis, if you can share a brief overview of your program. I guess we're going by by age because we're the second oldest. <laughs> so uh, we were created in 1998, which is a few years after um, uh, MFP. And we, um, over, over time, we've been focused on the different uh, parts of the financial sector. The financial sector contains really five branches and banking, insurance, asset management, financial services, and payment systems. We try to, um, we typically don't do much on the insurance sector, MFI is there for that reason, but on the rest, we try to um, address the, the, the issues that lead to employment in those sectors where technology, mathematics, and all of that comes into play. We'll be doing that, which has forced us to really focus on different sectors over time. We started with banking, we grew into the, the pension um, uh, system, as uh, people in Jennings may or may not know. Canada has some of the best pensions in the world, and they're great employers for people with quantitative backgrounds. And I know for, for a young person to think of a pension plan sounds like uh, strange, but we have the biggest and the most um, uh, also technologically inclined uh, pensions in the world. You may have seen on their teachers and the FTX story, but also on their teachers and the SpaceX story. So they have a lot of, um, uh, we try to be there. We we uh, we, we like to address all the disruptive um, uh, aspects of uh, blockchains and cryptocurrencies in our program. So we try to stay current with current events and uh, the latest addition to the training we give to our students is also in issues on a climate risk, sustainability, ESG, uh, which is some of the biggest areas of employment. We try to focus on areas where the students are in high demand for jobs and mathematics, technology, and finance um, is what makes them um, uh, access uh, those those jobs. So we have uh, about uh, 400 applications. We have about 30 uh, spots for students. It's a very competitive program. Our students uh, succeed in internships and in jobs just like the other programs and and um, we're happy to contribute to this 360 degree approach that the University of Toronto has to the financial sector in terms of uh, skill sets and employability. Fabulous. Thanks so much for, for that overview. Um, let's head over to, to Ng um, from the Master of Financial Risk Management. If you can share a bit of an overview of the programming. Great. Thanks, Mohammed. Uh, welcome, everybody. My name is Ng. I'm the Ma Academic Director and is, uh, of the MFRM program, an Associate Professor of the Rodman Faculty. Um, the MFRM program, if I were to describe it in one sentence, uh, empowers future leaders with cutting edge skills in finance and technology to drive success through risk management. Now, um, you can break down that sentence into each of its component pieces. So uh, which I think will encapsulate the ethos of the program well. So first of all, we empower future leaders, um, much as every one of our programs does. I think our program aims to develop students' abilities, not only in finance, but to in terms of formulating, synthesizing, and communicating recommendations about ambiguous risk management and business problems uh, in an effort to maximize your long-term career potential. Uh, cutting edge skills in finance and technology, our program is really about teaching skills at the intersection of those two areas, finance and technology, uh, that are connected to current issues confronting the practice of risk management. So what does that mean? Um, you know, adapting machine learning for financial analysis, how new technologies are changing the landscape of risk management, um, big data, and issues uh, con connecting those techniques with issues such as climate risk analysis, which is top of mind for a lot of our industry partners these days. Driving success through risk management, our program prepares students for uh, a diverse set of careers by highlighting how risk management drives business success in uh, several settings. So our 
most common career outcome is to get jobs at the big five Canadian banks, you know, BMO, CIBC, RBC, Scotia, uh, as well as the, what I would call the premier consulting companies such as Deloitte, ENY, KPMG, Oliver Wyman. Um, our students go on to these uh, companies where oftentimes in risk analyst roles, uh, they can also get other roles as well. But really, I think those types of jobs lay the foundation for uh, a long-term successful career, either in risk management or in any career that involves understanding risk, which is pretty much every career in finance. So, uh, you know, I'll just close by saying that our program is very much a, a small family. We have 60 students every year that we seek to fast track what I would call pre-experienced students, early career success, uh, meaning our typical uh, student graduate, finish their uh, undergraduate studies within the last two to three years. Uh, oftentimes they come straight from their undergraduate studies and are seeking to get a, find a way into the financial industry. So that includes students, not only who studied commerce, for example, as an undergraduate. So kind of think of like the tech oriented finance student who wants to basically get, you know, work in finance, but apply some more technical skills like, you know, data analysis or, or machine learning, whatever it is, right? So the tech oriented finance student is one type of student that we, we have. The other main type of student that we have is what I would call the finance oriented tech student. So students from engineering backgrounds or computer science backgrounds that are looking for a way to get into finance, um, the risk management program, I think is a great way for students with that type of background to, to do that, more or less because risk management at banks and, and consulting companies and financial uh, services companies is, a, is an incredibly well-suited job, is, is a job that's incredibly well-suited to what I would call the finance-oriented tech student. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of end my remarks there and take any questions later. Thanks. Great, thanks, Ng. And uh, Andre, how about we go uh, over to you for uh, an overview of the MFI? Is Andre still on the call? Sorry. Yeah, so hi, everyone. My name is Andre Badescu, and uh, I am the director of the MFI program, and I'm very happy to be here to share a little bit about our program. Um, uh, our program is a professional program that uh, belongs to the Statistical Sciences Department at the University of Toronto. And um, the program is designed uh, to teach students and train students at the intersection of three main areas, finance, insurance and data science. Um, before getting a little bit more deeper into the way the program is structured, I would like to uh, say that we are right now in the seventh cohort. So we are a younger program compared to the other three programs. We accept around 30 students um, every year in, the, in our cohort. Uh, the acceptance rate is uh, a little bit less than 10%. So it's a very competitive admission process. We, this, uh, this actual cohort, we have around 60% women uh, as our students. Now the program is uh, designed um, to, to be over one year. It's uh, divided in three uh, terms. Uh, in the first term, we're trying to address, we're teaching certain courses that are exposing our students to various concepts in finance, insurance, and data science more on the theoretical side. So students have to have a solid training in mathematics and statistics. We have courses in pricing theory, data science for risk modeling, applied uh, time series, and courses in uh, insurance mathematics. Um, uh, as well as uh, a course, uh, as a seminar course that is offered for two terms, where we are inviting um, uh, various professionals uh, uh, from industries who are going to present their open problems in these uh, three areas, in data science, finance, and uh, insurance. On the second uh, term that starts in January, the, our students are still exposed to courses. However, the content of the course is more on the applied side. So 
uh, we are preparing students uh, with a lot of courses that contains uh, uh, finance and insurance data cases, uh, data analytics in practice. We have a lot of focus on data science uh, methods and models that appear in data science and how can they be used um, in these two major uh, industries in finance and insurance. We are also offering some elective courses. We have our own uh, elective course design, uh, the derivative course, uh, but our students are also having the choice of choosing courses from the statistical sciences department. There are graduate courses taught by well-known experts in statistics, machine learning, insurance, finance, and so on. Now, the last term starts in May, and we have an internship, a four-month internship that we're preparing our students to get uh, into. And uh, we, this uh, four-month internship is going to end up with the project and the presentations that the students will have to do. Our placement rate, it's 100% uh, at the end of graduation. A lot of students continue after the internship with longer time internships or they just jump directly to, uh, to work in industry. Our program prepares students uh, for various positions. Uh, we have placed students in fintech, in banks, in insurance companies, in consulting, pension funds, data science companies, and so on. Thank you. Great, thanks for that. And I think um, a, a real diversity uh, of programs that I think are to some degree um, quite theoretical and also uh, fairly technical as well. So I'd love to hear from everyone on the panel in terms of what the ideal academic background uh, for your candidates would, would be um, and specifically what skills or knowledges would you recommend um, an incoming student has so that they can come into your program really hitting the ground running. Um, so why don't we go back to Jordi uh, to kick us off on that discussion. Very good. So what's an ideal candidate for, um, for the MFE program? It's one that has a strong academic background. Um, very importantly, like we do not look at the GPA. We do not care about the GPA. We like, we care about your course selection. We care about hard courses so basically like we look a lot into like what's your course selection especially in your third four year like which courses you've taken and basically like the purpose is like can you handle the program this is a very rigorous program so we want to see if you can handle this program communication skills communication skills are super important we have an asynchronous interview for um for admissions and uh, like your communication skills there are going to be very important um Working experience is somewhat important. We want to see like if you have like if you're going to be like able to like we're going to be able to place you. But this is not a necessary condition. We accept like most of our class do not have working experience. But what we want to see is what kept you busy also during your studies. Like were you only doing uh, uh, courses or you were doing something else? So like we care also like about these other things that you were doing. What kept you busy? And uh, this is gonna be like something very, very important too. And at the end of the day, what we're looking for, and uh, and that's it's we want to see this drive, this drive to become a leader, this uh, in, in capital markets, right? And that's what we're looking. Now we normally don't have many ideal candidates. There is like just a handful of them. So basically, at the end of the day, what what we're gonna be looking, we're gonna have like five, six that are like yes, clear, admit. But after that we're going to admit a class of like basically 28 students. What we want is a diverse class. And we want a diverse class in like all the sense. Like we want people from like different schools with very different backgrounds, with very different training. So we're going to have people that are like much better at getting placed because they have great communication skills, but they are like weaker in the math background. Some others are going to bring uh, something else. They are going to bring their math background. Some others will bring their economics background. Some others their finance background. Basically, what we try to create is basically a community that basically are going to help each other. And uh, that's basically like what we're trying to look. So like, uh, so don't think so much as like the ideal candidate. Let's think more about like, what can you bring to the program? This is something that is very important in, in, in the application that, that sometimes we don't see. We see a lot of like, oh, I want to do this program because of this, this, this. But from a, 
the other side, we want to see, okay, what, what is special about you? What can you bring to the program? What can you bring to the class? What can you bring to the community? How are you going to contribute there? So like, that would be my like biggest advice. So like highlight what you can bring to the program, what you can bring to the class and, uh, and yeah, and you'll be successful. Hey, thank, thanks for that. And I, and I appreciate hearing particularly sort of an emphasis on communication, which I think is probably common across all of the programs as we, you know, prepare folks for the workplace. So thanks for that commentary. Um, Luis, how about we go over to you for uh, the MMF uh, on that same topic? Um, what does the ideal candidate look like? So someone who has a, a drive to uh, succeed also, not just to perform well academically. We are a professional program and we want people who are uh, who have a drive to go into the industry to uh, succeed. And we have to take courses and do exams and all of that, but that's number one. Um, people with uh, excellent mathematics uh, and quantitative uh, skills, uh, people uh, with a good uh, knowledge of uh, technology uh, programming, and uh, people with good uh, communication skills. Without communication, I think I speak for the rest of the programs, uh, communication skills are becoming more and more uh, relevant. Uh, I would advise everybody in the audience not to, um, uh, I guess, uh, be led by the fact that we all live in a virtual world. So it's, you know, no, uh, the, the ability to communicate with humans is as important as your ability to communicate with computers. You need both. And this is uh, something that we emphasize very much in, in our program because we know over years of experience that this leads ultimately to success. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, Ing, over to you for um, MFRM. All right, thanks. And <clears throat> I, I think the ideal candidate is in addition, you know, in addition to everything that has been talked about before with respect to communication and, and, and so on, really the finance oriented tech student or the tech oriented finance student, right? Those are the two categories of, of students that I think are great candidates for MFRM. Um, and really, it comes back to that one sentence summary of the program that I started with, which is that we empower future leaders with cutting edge skills in finance and technology to drive success through risk management. Um, the cutting edge skills in finance and technology is, is, is really important because essentially there's a lot of demand in the finance, in the financial industry for people who have skills in both areas. You can think of the banks as sitting on a mountain of data that they don't know what to do with. And they need techno people with techno technical skills, but also finance skills to solve. So they can't, you know, if you brought in like a pure data analyst to look at that data, they, they wouldn't really understand it. If you just brought in like a pure finance person to, to look at that data, they'd like, well, you know, they know how to do evaluation, but they don't know how to process a lot of data, right? So you need someone with really the skills in that intersection of finance and technology to under to be able to understand the mountain of data that a bank like RBC sits on so that you can actually formulate a view about what risks the bank as a whole are bearing. And then from there, you go on to manage those risks. So, uh, you know, beyond the finance oriented tech student and the tech oriented finance students, I'll just echo the comments about communication before, and, and I'll even go a little bit further. Remember what I, what I said, the first part of that mission that we have is to empower future leaders. It's, it's not only about communication, but it's about the ability to formulate, synthesize, and communicate recommendations about ambiguous, difficult problems. Um, you know, that's really the key to long-term success. You can have all the technical skills in the world, and that'll get your foot in the door, but if you're not working or if you're not someone who is trying to cultivate skills and in, in how to formulate, synthesize, and communicate recommendations about ambiguous problems, you're, you're eventually going to hit a ceiling. Um, and so our program really tries to embrace students who exhibit that potential and also help them cultivate that uh, potential while they're here. Great, thank thank you for that, and 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 um, again, can't I think underscore enough what we're hearing from the panelists so far around the importance of those um, what traditionally have been called soft skills, but really I think what I'm hearing on this panel essential skills for the workplace. So so thanks for for reinforcing that, um, Andre. Over to you for MFI. What's a, what's the ideal candidate look like? 
Uh, thanks. So yeah, the um, as again, like the MFI being at the intersection of uh, three different areas, we're mainly looking, well, what, 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 whatever has been said before, we're looking for that uh, ideal candidate. And, but to be more precise uh, for our program, we're looking for students who have very strong quantitative uh, background, uh, mainly in probability and statistics and in applied mathematics. And uh, this should be ideally supplemented with some knowledge of finance and insurance, but not necessarily. Now, as data science is a very big part of our program, data science knowledge about machine learning models and so on, uh, training in data science is extremely useful for our program. Communication skill, as uh, they were mentioned before, are very important for our program, uh, especially because we are a part of our program. We have an internship component, as well as most of the courses, uh, the evaluation in most of the courses are based on projects where students have to interact with their peers, present their work, and so on. Um, uh, in addition to that, I think uh, an ideal candidate to our program has to be able to persevere into a challenging environment and has uh, very strong time management skills. Uh, they will be the students, especially in the first two terms, the students are going to be exposed to uh, various topics at the same time, they'll have to work on um, uh, various projects on the same time. So they'll have a lot of tasks that should be done at the same time. So students have to have uh, the ability to persevere in a, such a challenging environment as well as uh, time management skills. Now, what I would recommend for the students to work on uh, prior to starting in the MFI program, I would suggest that the students are brushing up their um, background on probability, statistics, especially on the courses that they were exposed in the last year of the undergrad. Uh, the students have to ideally have some sort of background in R, Python, and MATLAB. Uh, as well as uh, in finance and insurance. So any course in finance and insurance uh, will be a plus. And um, uh, to improve the communication skills, ideally the students prior to uh, coming to the MFI program uh, will have uh, to take a public speaking course that will improve uh, this very important skill, the communication skill. Great. Thanks very much for that, Andre. So, you know, as I'm listening to this conversation, I'm hearing, you know, somewhat similar themes in terms of um, content and, and some of the technical skills, would love to hear from all of you in, around how you would distinguish um, your program um, in terms of curriculum. Um, how would you advise a student who is sort of seeking a, a master's um, in this general space? And in your commentary, you can also say a few words on where you see students are in their journey. Are they early experience? Or are they working professionals, um, for example, to, to help uh, differentiate for folks on the call? So why don't we start uh, back with Jordi on, on that front? How would you differentiate or distinguish uh, um, your program? Okay, so um, what makes our program special, I think, is the is the unique curriculum that we have. Uh, again, like so, you're gonna take EMA uh, economics courses. So you're gonna have like your training in economics. You're gonna have your MBA courses at Rotman. So you're gonna have your training in finance. And basically, like the combination of these courses, like what's gonna help you is like it's gonna help help you get into like your first job. But most importantly, like what I really believe is that the academic training that we're gonna provide in the program is gonna help with the growth, right? At the medium long run, right? So like basically like we just not care about just about the first job, but we care about your career growth over time. And I think that like the slope well, is gonna change. We, we, we hope that basically like we are able to change that slope and basically your growth over uh, your career is gonna be way faster after like this program. So that's one of the objectives. Um, Another characteristic uh, that we have is that we have the internship uh, and uh, you're going to be able to take uh, winter opportunities or summer opportunities, like uh, whichever is uh, interests you. And we do not provide you with the internship. This is important. What we're going to do is we're going to train you 
on how to get an internship. We're going to train you about how to get a job. And that's what we're going to do. At the end, the responsibility of getting an internship, the responsibility of getting a job is going to be on you. But we're going to train you. We're going to be there behind you. We're going to provide so much material, so many like opportunities for you to learn on how to do it. But like basically, like it's going to be on you to do it. And like we're going to provide this training. And I think that that's, that's a good skill to have because at the end of the day, like during your career, you may want to change jobs. So like basically, like these skills are going to be there. Um, we have a long legacy. Uh, let me talk. We have a big alumni network. I really recommend everyone that is interested in the MFE program to go to our website, the MFE website uh, at U of T. We have an alumni tab in the website, and we have basically like all of our alumni with their picture, their job, their LinkedIn. And this alumni is like highly committed to the program. Like if you connect with them once you are in the MFE community, then you're going to get a reply. You're going to get advice. Okay. And like, you're going to get like uh, all sorts of advice. So like, basically we have like people now, like that we've been like 20 years out, we have people at different positions in the career path. So like, depending on the issue that you're facing, you're going to be able to talk uh, with junior people or with more senior people, depend on what you need. And then like, let me tell you a little bit about the job. So I already talked about that we get hundred percent internship placement and full-time job after like six months of graduation. A little bit uh, what we've gotten the numbers is that about 30% of our students get investment banking jobs. Uh, the other 20% is gonna be sales and trading type jobs. Asset management is about 20%. Private equity is about 10%. And then we have like uh, other like small like pockets. So like people like have gone into real estate, infrastructure, portfolio management, hedge funds, crypto. So like we, we can provide other venues, but like the main ones are going to be investment banking, sales and trading, asset management and private equity. So yeah, this is a, a little bit about what makes our program special. Okay, thanks so much, Jordi. And, and Luis, over to you, same question, what distinguishes um, your program vis-a-vis -vis curriculum, et cetera? Yeah, so you can look at the courses and then you can see differences between the programs, but perhaps the message that I can give to someone who's thinking about uh, these uh, four programs is, is, is one. And it, it's very simple. The jobs that will exist in the industry, say 10 years from now, most of them have not been invented yet. So to think about uh, this program because of the first job you wanna have after graduation, I think it's a mistake for our program, for all the other programs. What, people need to be aware is that you're getting into a career and this is the somehow the final push to get into that of course you can come back and do other programs in the future but this is the final push we're going to get into a course of, uh, of a trajectory as, as georgie said in our program what we like to focus is to maximize those internal um, uh, characteristics that the students will have so they can do their own version upgrades as the industry continues to change and we do that with the fundamentals of uh, mathematics and technology so that you can upgrade your operating system and you can adapt to the opportunities that will come uh, to the future. People that have, uh, say, an economics background or a managerial background, they will plan their version updates in a, in a different way. We focus on the students that come from a mathematics background and we give them the tools so that they can do their version upgrades on their own as they are in their career, as the environment changes, as jobs come and go, and they can adapt to the realities, which are very, very dynamic, more than ever before. Great. Thank you very much. And I really love that positioning of, of how these different programs really help to um, help people plan for not only their future, but to think about their own nimbleness within industry and sector. So, so thank you for highlighting. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you you cannot think about the uh, industry as being static, right? I mean, for example, I someone there was a question on the chat about you know when I get a job in investment banking. Well, investment banking is very different now from what it was ten years ago, and ten years from now, guarantee is going to be radically different, right? So uh, that question, no, no one really knows what it means because uh, it, you know, it, it, the the answer is time dependent. And everybody, if, if the people up into the program were 50 years old, it would be easier to answer those questions, but they're not. They are 40 years ahead of them. 
So you have to think very, very far into the future to see how you would like those version upgrades of your own education to uh, transform your career. Fabulous. Thank you for that. Ing, over to you for, for MFRM, your, your thoughts on how um, you distinguish this program. And, and um, well, let me kind of speak in, I think we are distinct in, in two ways. Uh, the first is thematically. Um, we are a program that is much more focused perhaps than the other programs on teaching our students the skills necessary to land uh, great careers in risk management. So uh, risk management is you know, a, a, a very important and broad function, perhaps somewhat lesser known, uh, but very much important at every major uh, you know, bank and you know, a financial services company, so much so that the banks often hire consulting companies to help them with it, which is why our main employers, if you want to think of it that way, where, we, where our students get jobs are the, the, big, the big Canadian banks plus the, uh, plus the consulting companies. Um, you want to think of our program as, you know, uh, uh, there, yeah, on this question of like, oh, you know, what program would be the best to break into investment banking? I mean, like, I, you want to think of an investment bank as a gigantic organization with many different functions, right? There's sales and trading, there's risk management and so on. And, and you can think of our program as a way to break into a job at one of the largest banks within the risk management function. And I actually think that the, with the risk management function is somewhat ideally suited for that two categories of students that I talked about, the tech-oriented finance student and the finance-oriented tech student, essentially because there's a lot of tech, you have to understand literally both finance and technology, you know, data analysis and things like that in order to help RBC understand, gee, what risks does RBC hold? Um, so that I would say thematically, you know, our, our, our program is just positioned a bit differently than the other programs that are represented here in that our students are, you know, they get different, many different jobs, but in some sense, the, the bread and butter of our program is risk management. And our program, many students essentially get jobs at investment banks uh, with, within the risk management function uh, or at consulting companies that essentially are helping the banks manage their risks. Uh, second, a uh, distinctive feature is a little bit more programmatic than uh, thematic. So uh, a distinctive programmatic feature of our program is the winter internship or the winter industry project, uh, which is essentially co uh, a course, but it's also essentially an internship that we line up for you. Um, so it's uh, the there is a, essentially a nine-week internship from January through March. We call it a project during which students work directly for a company to tackle a real world risk problem, formulate recommendations and communicate them to management. It's a way for you to, it's an opportunity for you to gain practical experience and also give the companies a chance to essentially, you know, test drive some, you know, junior talent in the form of you and potentially, uh, you know, see what you can do and maybe make you an offer later on. Um, so those internships are, are a dist very, very much a distinctive feature of our program. You know, the, the companies sponsoring those internships this year are a wide range. Again, it's all the name, it's kind of the names that you think of RBC, Scotia, and so on. But we also have a wide, wider range of companies every year. Uh, IA Financial, this year we have the Abu Dhabi Investment Authority sponsoring a project. Um, so, you know, that's, it's exciting it's in, those, in, in that those projects are very much connected to real world problems that companies care about right now. So right now, companies are very much worried about the impact of climate change on financial risk. And over a dozen of our projects, over a dozen of our 30 projects this year are focused on um, that topic. So thematic uh, difference, which is a focus on risk management and perhaps programmatic difference in terms of the distinctive winter internship that uh, essentially we line up for you. Thanks. Great, thanks very much for that, Ing. And, and Andre, over to you on, on this topic as well, what distinguishes the program vis-a-vis um, uh, -vis curriculum. Thanks. 
So yeah, clearly there are like tons of similarities among these four uh, masters of finance programs. And from a thematic point of view, what makes us uh, to be different and distinct from the other three uh, master programs in finance, um, the statistical science, our program is tilted towards a probabilistic way of thinking, of viewing things. And uh, we have a very big component that is the data science component. We have uh, designed our courses and we have more than 100 hours of formal training um, in, uh, in data science. So for those students whose interest is in data science and how can you apply data science in these two sectors of finance and industry, the MFI program is uh, designed for you. Now, uh, as a second uh, thing, a second part that makes our program distinct from a thematic point of view is the insurance part. Um, it is well known that the statistical sciences department at U of T is a central, is recognized by the Society of Actuary as a central of actuarial excellence. So students who are going to be part of our MFI program will be trained in insurance in both um, property and casualty insurance, as well as in, uh, in the life insurance side uh, by world-known researchers who are doing extremely important and interesting work in insurance. Uh, we have um, also a lot of uh, features, like uh, we, have, we are offering uh, equity awards for underrepresented uh, groups uh, to promote EDI. We are also the only program, graduate program in arts and science that is uh, offering the Master Count Foundation Award for students from Africa. Uh, we have lots of networking opportunities, a lot of seminars, a lot of a huge group of alumni that our uh, actual cohorts can rely on. We have a lot of involvement from our current PhD students in the MFI program. Uh, during the program, we also offer three awards. One award that is um, given to the best academic award, the best academic performance for the student with the best academic performance. We have a business acumen award as well as an ambassador award. Now for the curriculum, the whole idea of the program was mainly designed to how to use data science and in these, two, um, in, this, in, this, in these two main areas. So we designed the, the program in three, divided in three courses, in the three parts. In the first part, we're focusing mostly on the theoretical aspects in both finance and insurance, but uh, we are not really um, um, examining and uh, our students are going to be exposed to a lot of projects, a lot of, uh, uh, um, practical examples that are coming from finance and industry areas. So rather than uh, um, giving the students a taste platter on many areas, the courses that we are designed in the first um, semester are uh, main to give a gain, uh, to give students a, a big depth uh, on certain areas in finance and insurance. Now, on the second term, we're going to focus mostly, mostly on practical aspects. So therefore, we have a lot of very successful professionals um, uh, uh, who are coming from the finance and the insurance industry who are teaching on their on open problems that they are facing. We have uh, courses that are organized, uh, like case studies courses, where we have two or three uh, professionals coming and teaching in the program. And finally, uh, we put the, our internship at the end of the program, and the internship is kind of a ramping pass uh, for our students to a successful industry career. We have, uh, the students will have the opportunity uh, to have a longer than four months internships. We require a four month internship, but a lot of our students are actually doing their internship for more than four months, and a lot of them, they will um, jump from their internship into uh, full time employment. Great, Th thank you, for, thank you for that. Um, so I'm I'm actually just going to sort of pick up on one of the threads that you started talking about. So you talked about networking opportunities, et cetera. And so the last question for the panelists is really around sort of some of the co curricular supports and opportunities that exist within the program. Um, so Andre, maybe we'll go backwards and and we'll we'll just ask you to add. And I'm being mindful of time here, so we can do yeah. Q and A quickly. Um, another couple of points related to any co curricular supports 
reports and then we'll uh, check in with the rest of the panel on that. Yeah. So we have in our program, we have uh, two dedicated staff, uh, a program coordinator and an industry liaison who, is, who are helping tremendously our students for, in all stages, right from the admission process all the way to the graduation. So our staff are helping stud students uh, doing a lot of mock interviews. They are preparing students in, um, in uh, having the better resumes to increase their chances of getting uh, uh, of landing an internship or uh, uh, later on a job they uh, our staff are also or uh, design like they design um, every year for each cohort a resume booklet uh, that contains a lot of information about each student about the strengths of each student that is later on given to our industry partners uh, in order to um, increase their chances to land the better candidates. We also have a career educator who comes uh, from the Career Center at the University of Toronto, and uh, the career educator gives a series of workshops that are especially designed for our students to prepare them to have a, a better chance for future job opportunities. We also have um, a mentorship program that is developed uh, in our house mentorship program coordinate by our in-house mentorship coordinator. We have tons of information sessions about various uh, companies, as well as very focused uh, sessions from different individuals working in different uh, finance or insurance uh, sectors. We have a lot of panel discussions from industry. We like to promote um, the, a lot of uh, networking events such as the Fields Institute, the seminar on quantitative finance uh, series uh, that is mandatory for our students to attend. We have our uh, very important- to, I'm just sorry, I don't wanna interrupt. Yeah. Uh, I just a quick time check because we've got the other three panelists before time's up. So okay. it'll be another quick, quick uh, sure. 20 seconds to wrap up and then we'll hand yeah. off to Dean. Uh, we offer, uh, because we realize that our students are not having the uh, homogeneous background, some students are better in some areas, some students are uh, worse in the, uh, some areas, we offer at the beginning of the term, we offer several boot camps for the students to put them more or less at the same level, and we have six different boot camps, and in the forthcoming year, we are planning to develop some short courses uh, to improve the, the students' background in the area they are lacking. Amazing, thank you so much. And sorry again for the interruption. Um, Ing, over to you. And I'm just doing a quick time check for all the panelists that we've got probably another three minutes before um, we, we wrap up. So sure, um, I'll, I'll be brief uh, because actually the answer for us is very simple. So the co so as an MMFRM student, you have access to the entire suite of co-curricular offerings at Rotman, uh, which is extremely extensive, both encompassing networking sessions with the entire rot you know all across all programs at rotman uh including the mbas and and uh, our, M our master of management analytic programs um uh, and the co-curricular offerings such as those offered by the self-development lab which is essentially a lab that we have here designed to help you cultivate a lot of those skills that we talked about initially around communication teamwork and leadership um so I think that is a key strength of the uh, of our program, um, just coming from the fact that MFRM is is housed within Rotman. Uh, essentially, at MFRM, you're a Rotman student and have access to the entire suite of uh, Rotman offerings. Fabulous, thank you, Ing. Uh, Luis, over to you, and then Jordi for the for the final. Uh, so be very brief. We organize a lot of industry students. Uh, the receptions, um, open houses, uh, the students need to know what's going on there and our, the industry welcomes our participants, so we have a lot of those. We organize um, a, 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 a online uh, seminar series, which is actually on Spotify, MMF Global, where we bring industry leaders to talk about what's going on in the industry. You can follow them on, on Spotify. Uh, we organize a, um, a symposium at, at Blue Mountain, at the ski resort. Uh, it's a it's a weekend think tank. We bring people from the industry, our students, our alumni, people from all over the world come there, and we spend a weekend uh, thinking and talking about what's uh, what's changing the world, and perhaps uh, you know uh, other things that uh, you can check on on our website. But I think in the interest of time, this give you a good summary of what we do. Fabulous, Luis. Thank you so much, and Jordi. 
Very good. So I'll be brief too. So um, basically like upon acceptance, we're gonna like send you like a bunch of materials to start preparing uh, yourself for uh, like the jobs. Uh, basically like in the months of uh, April, May, June, just before the program starts in July, basically like we have students that have organized, this is the third year that they've done it. They provide basically like training during the weekends about industries, about markets, about how to get a job. Basically, like so very early on upon acceptance, you're going to start working on the MFE uh, professional development. Like uh, for like two years now in a row, we've had like four students have been placed on internships before the program starts, like through all these uh, things that we do. Then like in July, we're going to start a boot camp. We're going to like prepare you like with academic courses, with mock interviews. And we're gonna have top external vendors too that are gonna come to the program like that are used by like most big banks, okay? Like the marquee group, like to talk about accounting, coding, data management, analytics. We have access to the like Rodman Finance Lab. But like, look, most importantly, like the biggest support that the MFE can provide is its big alumni network. We have like this large legacy. It's massive. They are there all the time hugely committed to the program. So like that's that's the biggest support that you can have. Fabulous. Thank you so much. And, and thanks to all of our panelists. I think we've got uh, four really incredible programs here um, at the University of Toronto. So uh, much appreciated for, for all of your time. I think we've got uh, two minutes left. So maybe time for uh, perhaps one question from the audience. Um, if uh, anyone would like to raise their hands, um, if not, um, we have the opportunity or you have the opportunity to reach out directly to uh, the program offices for the programs that are represented here. I see a couple of hands up. Um, so Michael, um, maybe over to you to, to get us started and, and perhaps probably the only question of the session. So, so over to you. Awesome. Thank you so much for hosting uh, this session and to all the panelists. I will, currently, I'm applying for one of the program, but I am just discovering another program that I'm quite interested in, to it, the MFE. So I was wondering if we're able to apply two program at the same time in the, within the graduate school. Yes, you, you can apply to all the programs. Thank you. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much. And Adida, I see your hand is up. Hi, thank you uh, for info session. I'm interested um, that I have graduated nine years ago from the Faculty of Mathematics and Mechanics. And till these years, I took only bachelor, but I have taken several qualifications like CFA, ACI dealing. And also, I know that the world is changing. And by myself, I have done lots of online courses in uh, Python or data science. But I know that I need something more professional. That's why I'm interested in MMF program. I wonder if I have graduated nine years ago, uh, was I be given a chance to apply for this program? In, and before applying, please help me. If there is anything that I can do that will boost my um, application to be enrolled, can the director help me with this issue? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a great question. And, and we're actually just at time. So maybe I'll turn to um, the panelists very, very quickly, we can go over a minute or two to, to address that question. I think it's a combination of appropriate prerequisites and where you are sort of post-graduation or post-undergrad, but um, I'll, I'll turn to the directors of the programs to, to maybe quickly comment on that. Um, um, Jordi or Ng or, or someone, would you like to, to quickly jump in there? I think you mentioned MMF. Uh, so I yeah, think so I, I, we do it on a case by case basis. I mean, every, every case is different. Uh, we do look into the, uh, the background that you have and we do take into account that once you've been in the industry for, for a long time, your brain starts to work in a different way. Okay, it's a bit more, more practical, but every case is different. We have had uh, uh, students of all, of all types and we, we focus a lot on diversity. We do like to have a very diverse program across all um, uh, dimensions. So. 
Great. Thank you. And I missed the, the MMF piece. So thanks for, <laughs> thanks for catching that, Jordy. Okay, okay. everyone, I, th I think we're at time. Um, thank you again to all of the panelists, to the program offices, and to all of the attendees. We had a really fabulous turnout today. Um, if you submitted a question in the chat, someone from the relevant program office will be in touch with you directly. So, so don't fret. We will make sure to, to follow up appropriately. Um, you're welcome to reach out to the program offices at any time um, with regards to any questions you have about these programs. Um, and thank you again for joining us today. Uh, we're Wherever you are in the world, have a lovely evening or rest of day um, and, and take good care. Great. Thank Bye. you.